So, um, the Gaming Age is, is one of MSI's best mid-budget gaming boards sold. And at a, a sub-$200 price tag, it promises a lot of things. And one of them is unprecedented performances. But you have to be careful with this series because uh, it comes with a lot of baggage. And last year, I had reviewed the now infamous X570 Gaming Age. It was inadequately designed and its VRM was overheating at every turn and corner simply said it was a mess. But MSI did improve its manufacturing processes lately, and the whole question is, is uh, its B550 variant any better? Well, today we are reviewing the very requested MPG B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi from MSI. An aggressive sub-$200 board which claims to please about the most demanding gamers out there whilst keeping an affordable price tag and voted sexiest motherboard of the year by Greek Orthodox priests in Greek monasteries. So MSI's MPG lineup of motherboards is all about performances and the Gaming Edge is its stars, the most sold uh, motherboard in that lineup. And the B550 chipset is definitely a challenge because it does bring PCI 4.0 into the equation, which in turn brings higher costs of manufacturing, which makes it harder to keep it below $200. And the only way it can do so is by focusing solely and only on performance-centric components. Everything else on this motherboard is a second-class citizen. It's also competing in a very busy market segment, the sub-$200, and it goes head-to-head -head against the excellent B550 Tough Gaming and the B550 Hours Elite, both of which I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so just yet. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a 6 PCB layered ATX motherboard, which is a first for the Gaming Edge series and uh, precisely what MSI needed to equip this motherboard for a, a perfect PCI 4.0 support and a better heat dissipation at VRM level and exactly what was missing on its X570 variant. CPU-wise, it is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting both 3000 and 5000 series Ryzen processors. In other words, PCI 4.0 only CPU which has its importance since it will deliver double the bandwidth of the older PCIe 3.0 standard and obviously will have a definite impact on the day-to-day -day performances of your build. VRM-wise, well, that is where the B550 Gaming Edge really did well. It went with the exact same VRM already seen on its sibling, the B500 Tomahawk, again, which I had reviewed not so long ago and you should take a look at, meaning 1260 amps power stages organized in six team phases, five of which are are CPU centric. That's 600 amps of raw power to juice the most demanding processors a Ryzen series can afford and squeeze every bit of Hertz potential out of its overclocking abilities. Obviously, having 60 amps power stages is gloriously powerful, but having 600 amps spread over these few power stages results also in a higher footprint. And to control that insane amount of heat, MSI equipped the Gaming Edge VRM with rather premium and extended heat sinks, which does an impeccable job at keeping temperatures impressively low even when overclocking a 12-core processor. Additionally, both of our heat shields have a double thermopadded contact design to provide individual heat dissipation for both our chokes and power stages. Both of these features, topped with the six PCB layers, gives us one of the most efficient CPU power delivery the industry can have. At full synthetic load, the VRM remained at a cool 40 degrees Celsius, which is about the coolest you'll get on the market today. Period. Obviously, this is exactly what MSI needed to do to make this motherboard a CPU screamer. So this is my very first uh, a big expensive engineering kudos to MSI for this. Now, taking a closer look to our B550 chipset. Since our CPU takes care of the PCIe 4.0 heavy lifting to fit our most performant components, the chipset can comfortably remain at PCIe 3.0 standard without slowing down our build. It also means it can remain much cooler with 6 watt of heat footprint instead of 11. So no more need for a fan to keep it cool as seen on its X570 counterpart. As a result, we got PCI 4.0 bandwidth for the most performance-centric components of our board and no more need of a fan, which means lower uh, production cost. Now, memory-wise, the MPG B550 Gaming Edge supports up to 128GB of DDR4 RAM in a dual-channel configuration, clocking up to an unprecedented 5.1GHz with Ryzen Pro Series. But, and this is a big but just like 
mine only if it runs on a single stick. The more you will populate your DIMM RAMs, the lower the clock will go. So if you really want to hit those 5 GHz and up, you're going to have to go with more expensive, higher density single stick RAM. If you put a second, third and fourth, um, you'll be stuck at 3.6 GHz nothing more. Staying in the memory, we have two M.2 solid state drive sticks, which can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second. But since our CPU fed M.2 solid state drive supports PCI 4.0 standard, it can swap data up to whooping 64 gigabit per second, which obviously is great for a boot drive. In both cases, our M.2 solid state drive sticks get really hot really quickly. Unfortunately, we have at least one long and thick heat sink equipped with a 0.5 millimeter thermo pad, which does an amazing job at keeping it away from from the ugly, evil uh, thermo throttling spaghetti monster. Now, staying in the storage section, worth mentioning the presence of our usual, somewhat obsolete but reliable 6 SATA 3.0 plugs, which can deliver data up to a bottlenecking 6 gigabit per second. Obviously, I'm not a great fan of SATA 3 anymore. I wish we had another standard by the year 2021, not the case but fine, I shall behave. Export-wise, we have four PCIe exports, two bachelors and two 16 slots with different speeds. As usually, only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes, therefore, this is where you'd want your video card installed for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second 16 slot is capped at an only 4 lane PCI 3.0 standard, so not really suited for GPU intensive tasks, but exactly what I expected for such a mid-budget gaming motherboard. Now back IOIs first, let me know the presence of an integrated padded back IO plate, which is rather a premium and welcome feature at this price range. Now starting from the left, we have a CPU flashback button for a CPU-less BIOS recovery or update, a must to make it compatible with Ryzen 5000 series motherboard without going around and trying to borrow or even buy a 3000 series to boot it up. Two USB second generation plugs, our display outputs for integrated graphics, which both can support up to 4K 60 frames per second, which I'll keep an eye on with the new 5000G series of Ryzen processors coming out with next generation of integrated graphics. Next we have two 5 gigabit 3.2 generation USB plugs, two 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a Type-C, a 2.5 gigabit per second Realtek LAN, which is a sizable upgrade coming from the X570 variant, which was capped at 1 gigabit only. Our dual band Wi-Fi 6 adapter able to transfer up to 2.4 gigabit per second, making this board definitely a connectivity wonder. And finally, and thankfully, we got our 8-channel ALC1200 audio codec, which despite being a mid-range codec, heavily benefits from our 6 PCB layering, since both left and right audio channels have been traced on dedicated PCB sheets. Add to that a rather generous 5 Nikikon capacitors and you have about the most premium audio experience you can hope from an integrated audio system both in recording and gaming. Overall, a very well featured back IO with a definite focus on connectivity and something which will definitely um, uh, benefit your gaming experience. BIOS-wise, it is the same interface we have been uh, accustomed for the past four years. Easy to navigate, agreeable graphics, not much complaint there if it was not so buggy. In EUFI mode, the BIOS is unstable, and as soon as you dig in a little in the menus, they all turn into Chinese characters and freeze your system. Now, the only fix for that is to switch from UEFI to CSM BIOS early on when you boot in, and, and then things get much, much more stable. So yes, MSI, you get work ahead of you on this front. Um, and it's almost unforgivable coming from a company as much represented and prolific as yours with all your resources, just just fix it, please. Now moving on to our front panel connectors, we have two second generation plugs, great for monitoring, a five gigabit third generation plug and a 10 gigabit type C front panel connector, which is pure luxury coming from a B series motherboard. Cooling wise, we have eight PWM fans, including a single dedicated water pump. And obviously this is more than you'll need to provide your build with a bunch of airflow and good quality cooling and all that stuff. But I, I really feel that maybe again here, MSI went overboard and spent a little bit more too, too much of our money on way too many connectors if they had gone the gigabyte road, meaning hybrid connectors, which can all support either PWM fans, water pumps, or even flow sensor, we would all have saved a few cents for you 
and for us. Now, troubleshooting wise, we got our easy debugger together through the booting process, which is what I expected to see on a PCI 4.0 enabled motherboard. Finally, this would not be a gaming motherboard without the usual RGB madness, which makes our lives so much more meaningful. Starting with a single RGB strip hidden under our chipset heat shield and four RGB connectors scattered all over our board, including two addressable ones. In short, if your uh, uh, streaming career never really took off, well, at least you have enough RGB to light your own solar system. Now, in conclusion, at 190 bucks before taxes, the MSI MPG B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi is the proof that when MSI puts its mind into something, it can deliver. It shows a real improvement coming from its hot mess of a sibling, the X570 Gaming Edge. The VRM is both powerful and heat efficient, the very point where its X570 variants so miserably failed. It is feature rich and delivers a solid foundation for a long lasting product and it does deliver beyond its price range for sure but it's also so deja vu if you really take a close look to this motherboard it's verbatim exactly the very same motherboard i had reviewed a few months ago the b550 tomahawk it's pure product cannibalism and a bit lazy coming from msi i really don't understand why they have to produce twice the same product on the same year on the same chipset i don't care if one is called mag or mpg these are the same motherboard with slight change of design so yes of course it's a great motherboard and it's an amazing motherboard because it is basically a rebranded Tomahawk. And MSI, maybe you should start to rethink your strategy and maybe propose less boards but with more distinctive qualities. Now this said, the B550 Gaming Edge, just like the B550 Tomahawk, is an excellent mid-budget gaming board, about the very best one you can have at this price tag. And my advice to you, well, get either of them, either of one who's available to you at the cheapest price at the time because that will only be the difference the price and availability only all right